Hello, just doing a quick video here. Just want to share with you my settings for the Auto Kylos, basically the Ergo um, uh, algorithm and what kind of settings I'm running here on my RX 570 video cards. Uh, yeah, you can basically pause the video and take a look here. And now I'm going to go over some of my thoughts behind the settings here. So what I found with the Ergo algorithm is it's very core dependent. Uh, so the first thing I did and just FYI, I've been running this rig stable for about a month. Like when I mean stable, it's been running pretty good for a couple days. Occasionally a GPU will crash. I'll come tune it and I'll fix it and I'll be running. But anyways, uh, these are the settings here. So with this algorithm, as I was saying, it's very core dependent. So immediately I went to testing the core and what I could push the core clock to. So a lot of my GPUs here, they're running uh, the GPU that really couldn't handle much overclocking. I left it at thir at uh, 1230 megahertz. Uh, but then I found a lot of other video cards here the RX 570s, of course, they could run around 1300 to as high as 1380 megahertz on the core. And you can see the uh, hash rate is fluctuating. That's because it's rebuilding the next job cycle. And we are using the Team Red Miner here. Uh, but yeah, I am running a very high core clock. And of course, with a very high core clock, you do need to run a much higher core voltage. And one thing I'm going to mention right out of the uh, bat there is that the uh, when you are running such a high core voltage on this particular algorithm, the power consumption does not scale like Ethereum Classic or Ravencoin. So I found I could run around 1300, 1340 megahertz on the core, around, you know, that 900 to 980 to about 1 volt or 1000 millivolts pretty well. I, I'm not 100% sure what it's pulling from the wall. I think this entire rig is doing about 1600 watts. Uh, I did not have the time to measure each card individually, but 1600 watts, you divide that across 12 cards, and that gives you an average of the power consumption per card. Obviously, some cards are overclocked higher than others, and the biggest thing to consider when you are overclocking is, of course, what the profitability is. I like to use this Hero Miner's profitability calculator. It's pretty accurate, so let's say my GPU is getting 60 mega hash. It'll estimate I make about $1.19 a day, and that's on my current, of course. And this fluctuates, and I like the Hero Miner's layout here because it tells me the network hash rate, how that goes up and down, and then the most important thing is the difficulty. Number of miners, the price as well. I like to use this uh, Ergo pool here. I don't particularly use it to mine to it. Like, I have one rig mining to it, uh, but then I preferably like to use Nano Pool just because it's a lot larger, and I, I speculate that I get better payouts there. But anyways, with this profitability calculator, you can decide, okay, at 60 mega hash with my current settings, I make a dollar twenty, and it'll pull X amount of power from the wall. X just means whatever it's pulling. And if I overclock it more, it's going to use more power. But what's my increased daily earnings? So you just have to go through the math there and figure out, is it worth overclocking? And back when I was mining Ergo back in, I think, like the uh, May 16th, 17th, when it was really, really high in price, it made a lot of sense to run these high overclock settings. And I just left them just because they were running stable and they were somewhat power efficient. Of course, uh, software power consumption is not accurate, but basically I just did some quick math. I'm like, okay, it makes sense to draw a bit more power to earn a little bit more because back about a month ago, these cards were earning about three, four, five dollars a day when overclocked to 70 mega hash. So it was really worthwhile getting it up there. But now let's go into the setting side of things. Uh, very quickly, you can see I have a very high core clock, of course, high core voltage. And then some more overclocking settings that I'd really recommend you taking a look at here is the memory controller voltage and the memory voltage. This does play an effect. I'm not 100% sure what setting it's for, but I do know um, that if you just have mem state one, you'll be undervolting your memory controller voltage to about 850 millivolts. But if you come in here, uh, you can actually lower this down to about to about 800 millivolts uh, from the default 850 when you're at state uh, mem state one, and you will save a bit more power. So these are the settings I like to run in. Of course, here. Uh, depending on your memory, if you're running Samsung or Alpita, use Reference 20 in the AMD Mem Tweak. And if you're running the Micron or Hynix, use Reference 30. Now, another quick note with this algorithm I found. If you have Alpita memory, and of course all my cards are Ethereum BIOS modded, I need to put that out there, uh, which means all the which means all the timings are done. Uh, what I found with this algorithm is, of course, it's a ratio between core clock and memory clock. You don't need to overclock memory if the core is not high enough. So you can see here, GPU two, for example, uh, 71 mega hash. We're running 1325 on the core, 1000 millivolts uh, for the voltage. I found this card here needed 850 millivolts on the memory controller there, 800 millivolts. And then, of course, because this is LP to memory, what I'm getting to here, I only needed to run 18 
20 megahertz compared to what I found with Hynix memory on the other hand uh, here's a great example here uh, 69 mega hash 1300 core uh, but I needed 1940 megahertz to get the optimal uh, mega hash out of that card and I found that specifically with the Hynix, Hynix cards I did need to clock them a little bit higher uh, to get a optimal mega hash out of them. Uh, so yeah, my favorite cards for this algorithm were pretty much any cards that had Alpida or Samsung memory. They seem to work very well. And of course, it's a balance between core clock and core voltage to get a stable uh, running card. And then of course, the memory clock, you just want to keep bumping that up until you get diminishing returns. So what I found here, any memory clock above 1820 for GPU2 with the core clock of 1325 did not give me any additional mega hash or performance. And as we all know, the higher the clocks for memory, the more power consumption it's going to use. So basically, if you've watched any of, my, any of my other previous videos, like the Ravencoin overclocking video we did well over a month ago, you'll notice I want to keep my memory clock as close uh, to an optimal setting uh, when I set my core clock. Basically, I want that ratio to be really nice and tight so we're not wasting any additional power. And of course, now that it is summer here, um, we are going to be wanting to probably... If you're setting, if you're, uh, what I mean is if your temperatures are very high, you may want to reduce these settings here. Now... Quickly talking about profitability again, uh, this is something that will vary a lot over time and of course uh, when you buy and sell coins depending on where you live that can be considered a taxable event so you do want to, what I want to get to here is now your strategy for mining, I don't particularly have one quite yet on that I would recommend. Uh, but the thing is profitability changes every day and of course at the end of the month you always have a power bill to pay so my suggestion is if you are new to mining or if you're mining for a long time you probably have a plan already uh, but i always suggest mine your coin if you really believe in it you can hodl it but i do recommend cashing some out every single month to pay your electric and basically just to cover your basic expenses and maybe even a little bit towards your roi because uh, you never know what the market's going to do i mean Long term, Bitcoin probably has a good future, uh, but in the short term, it can get quite volatile. And that's where with profitability, whether you're mining Ergo, Ethereum Classic, or you're switching to Ravencoin, which is becoming more profitable again, uh, to always have kind of your strategy on, OK, how much am I going to cash out every month to pay my electric? Am I going to pay my electric out of pocket? What are my risks? What's a reward here? And just think through your numbers. Make sure you have a plan. Uh, because the last thing you want is kind of what happened to me is where it goes to the peak of the market, then it drops down, you have an electric bill to pay, and now you're cashing out uh, some of your coin at 50% of what it's worth. Does it suck? Yes. At the end of the day, we're still in a bull run from what I can tell, so it worked out pretty well. Uh, but yeah, always have a plan. That's the biggest thing. Uh, is it a bad thing to sell when the coins go down? I mean, it sucks, uh, but if you can still afford to pay your electric, you may as well you know, take care of that. But anyways, I'm going to wrap up the video there. This is just a quick look into my Ergo settings and what I've been running. Uh, and this has worked really successfully for me. If you'd like more videos, you can let me know in the comment section below. These are not edited videos. Uh, if I edit them, I'm probably never going to make a video because it just takes too much work and effort. But yeah, you can copy these settings. You can let me know what kind of results you've been getting when mining Ergo. And as well, if you have another coin suggestion, whether you'd like me to revisit Ravencoin or Ethereum Classic, or maybe there's another altcoin out there that seems pretty promising, uh, you can comment that in the video description below. But yeah, anyways, I'm going to be signing out here. And again, these are just my Ergo video settings. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.